Well, while I can craft it manually, I think uh, we should probably start learning how to auto craft. Hello everyone, welcome back to All The Mods 8. As you can see, I've been uh, doing a little bit of work, tearing this place apart and adjusting some things, because in between episodes I've actually spent... Uh, yeah, a couple of hours setting up some extra crops around here, going through this tier three and grabbing the ones that I want. So I grabbed things like Prismarine and uh, I ended up getting rid of the Certus Quartz because I'm not actually going to use it, but I grabbed Obsidian, Nether Quartz, Redstone, Glowstone, Copper and Iron. The rest are sort of mod related and uh, specific to each one of those mods. So I've decided to uh, leave those. And so we just have some basics going over here and I'm ready to go on the next layer. It's hard to tell the difference between these two. That's actually Prudentium and this is Imperium, but I'm ready to get started on some of these. Start setting myself up with some Lapis, some Gold, and uh, maybe even the Osmium and End Seeds. In fact, most of these are pretty good and I think I want the Blaze and Enderman. I'm not so worried about the Ghast or Experience. But that's stuff that I will be doing uh, probably in between episodes or not really showing on screen because uh, you guys get the idea. We've definitely, we've definitely worked on this enough to show it off. And you can see that I have extended these out. This is actually the maximum range on this thing. I think I have, yeah. So that is as far as it will go. And I tried a few different things, but this is what I ended up going with. Now, something that has been really annoying me trying to uh, get around through this is space. I don't want to just rip it all apart, but like crouching through different areas and then getting stuck here and having to walk around the outside and whatnot was getting a little bit on my nerves. So I think it's time. I think it's time to go small. We have our personal shrinking device from compact machines, which allows us to go inside them. But I'm after this personal shrinking device from Shrink, <laughs> which is actually ridiculously cheap. I just need a stone button and with this thing, oh yes. So this is actually part of the tips and tricks as a little fun thing you can use. Use it to shrink helpful for working on automation and also just overall fun. What will we get as our random reward? Oh, honey, nice. But with this thing, I can bring myself down to small, <laughs> super small. I'm a little guy and I still have my, uh, my ability to walk over things because of the boots, but I can actually walk in between things like this. Look at that. I just a little guy. <laughs> I can squeeze down in between places like this and, uh, really work on some compact stuff without having to worry about the space that I'm taking up. Now I think, ah, oh. I'm inside an ender chest. How about we do that? Oh boy. I can go things like sort of medium height here. I think 0.5 is half the normal height, so I can just fit under a single block, which is not bad. I can also go a little bit larger. Ha ha! Aye, how you doing? In fact, if we get out here, I can go to 10. Well, hi. How y'all doing? Do, 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 do. Hold on. What is this? A farm for ants? <laughs> oh my. <laughs> oh, this is fun. It makes this place look ridiculous. That's normal size. Big bubble. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, da, 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 da. I'm bigger than the trees, but ah, that's better. Usually I'm going to just want to stick down to a smaller size because it's very convenient. Uh, click. It's, it's so far down. Come on. Yep. Ah, so I'm going to stick with the little one. <laughs> we are slightly under half the height of a block. Small. Now, with that being said, the thing that we're really after doing here is uh, sort of working out how to auto craft. Now, I have a lot. I ended up going a little bit overboard and I have a lot of the uh, 
the top tier, although I'm not sure that's the actual top tier. There may be a little bit further to go in the mystical agriculture. I know that there's this creative essence, but I do want to sort of automate going up to this stuff and just get myself a good supply of all of it ready and waiting. Now, in here, I still have 65,000 essence and that's actually not connected right now. So we have this stuff here. You can see I've been building up a decent supply of this redstone and iron and all of that. And these are going to be super useful for crafting up bits and pieces. The redstone can obviously get turned into a decent, efficient source of redstone. But once again, I've got a lot of it in here and I'll probably slowly transfer all of this across to my storage disk itself. I, uh, I don't mind having uh, this set up, and if I get my priorities set up correctly, it'll, uh, it'll work just fine. But, oh, let me just have a look at this. Priority on this is set to 100 so that I guarantee that the uh, storage draw is a go. But as we go further, we're going to have to definitely be a little careful with how we set up our priority. Now, uh, normal size, please. <laughs> so we're going to keep that on us and uh, keep these things. These things tend to be... Stuff that I use quite consistently, but I can't really hide from it much longer. At Refined Storage, we have a crafting grid. A pattern grid is what I'm after. This. So a pattern is the main... Uh, we're going to need a lot of these, so I'm actually going to make up a bunch. Uh, the patterns are the main powerhouse of this setup, I believe. And this is, <laughs> this is stuff that I have not worked with before. Um... Why does it say that I don't have patterns? I do. So I need to make myself up a grid, which shouldn't be too difficult to do. Construction core, a destruction core, and then a pattern grid like this. There. No, nothing from refined storage. Interesting. Hmm. But this is going to be uh, something that we we work our way through. Auto crafting. This is what I'm after. Uh, there. Patterns are the bread and butter of auto crafting. These store recipes to let your RS network know how to craft items. Why is it not? Oh, maybe because I haven't put it in my inventory. There we go. This has obviously opened up another line. So we have a pattern grid here. This grid allows you to imprint recipes into patterns for your network. The easiest way to create a recipe for a pattern is to look up the item in JEI, then click on the plus button in the bottom right of the recipe. This will then place the recipe into the grid. On the right side, the top slot is used for storing blank patterns. With a blank pattern inside, you should be able to click the arrow underneath to imprint the recipe into the pattern. You'll then want to put the pattern into the crafter. Okay, uh, monitoring the crafting queue. When attached to your system, the crafting monitor allows you to see what items are currently in your crafting queue. You'll need one of these if you want to be able to cancel crafts that aren't working or are bugged. Gotcha. And then there's a crafter. The crafter is how we store patterns for our network to know how to craft items. Once a recipe is placed into the crafter, you'll be able to request an item to be crafted from your grid. You can do this by hitting Control shift when clicking on the item you have a recipe for to bring up the crafting GUI. This block can also be placed facing a machine to use processing patterns. For example, if you point a crafter at a furnace, you can put a recipe inside for a recipe you need a furnace for, like smelting raw processes. As long as the crafter is attached to your system and the furnace has an importer attached to it, the crafter will allow you to request the smelted version of the processor. Okay, that's interesting. Um, cool, what is it? So security, no, crafter. Let's make up uh, one of those keep clicking the wrong thing uh one of those anyway just to be sure that we have the items that are needed there we go ta-da <laughs> we'll grab that and it gives us a few extra bits and pieces too that's good iron crafter an upgraded crafter that holds more patterns and has increased crafting speed oh okay I'm starting to get the idea but before we go too far, let's uh, put a few things away and let's think about this. Now, for starters, I'm just going to uh, be a little bit messy and put these things next to it. Okay, if I grab these patterns out, let's do some very basic. Okay, if I put a crafting there and say I want to craft up some stone. Okay, if I create that, makes 20 stone like this. 
then how does this work? I put it into a crafter. Let's put the crafter here. Okay. And then there was one more thing that I needed, right? Monitor, a crafting monitor or manager. Which one was it? Crafting monitor. Just need one of these and there we go. <laughs> Smash it through it. So what did this say again? Attached to your system, the crafting monitor allows you to see what items are currently in your crafting queue. You'll need one of these if you want to be able to cancel crafts. Okay, well, uh, let's just quickly grab one of these and put this here. Crafting monitor. Okay, that shows what's in there. This is how you make a, uh, a thing. This holds them. How do I actually request one? That's the question. Crafter manager. Let's just quickly have a look at this to, uh, to see whether or not it shows anything from your grid. You can do this by hitting control shift. When clicking on an item, you have a recipe for to bring up the crafting GUI. Ah, so for example, we have 4,412 in there. If I do control shift and click on it, oh, wait, so. 4412, I request, it crafts 20, so I want to request, say, that, uh, start, hey, there it is, okay, 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 interesting, so it's a matter of remembering what I have auto-crafting stuff for, I wonder if there's a way to know which one you have recipes for, is that maybe what the crafter manager is? Let's make it and check. So a crafter manager needs one of those and it needs two crafters. So I need two of those. And this is why auto crafting is great because I can request the final product. And as long as I have a crafting pattern for the things before it, it will just make it, I believe. <laughs> so let's, uh, let's put that in there make one more of these and then Oh, of course, we need another with a crafting manager. Oh, where was that? Or was that just, uh, ah, that was just a, an achievement or an advancement rather than actually something in the quest line. Uh, craft to manage your patterns in a better way. Okay. Uh, I'm running out of space a little bit. So we'll definitely have to set this up a little bit cleaner. Ooh, it's almost like I could uh, benefit from being a bit shorter. E. <laughs> I jump up here. Oh no. Oh. <laughs> At least I can get out there. And then we just click that on there. Then I can come out here and place that there. Cool. Cool. So this is where I can see my, uh, my current crafters that are attached to this system. And then I can, uh, I can see what recipes I have. I wonder if if there's a way to craft from here, that would be nice if there was a way to craft from there or from here. If the crafting manager showed you all your recipes and then you could select from there, that'd be awesome. But I guess eventually you have it set up so that uh, most of them or most of the main things that you craft, you have set up and uh, a recipe or a pattern for it done. And then it's just a matter of remembering. Oh yeah. And if it doesn't allow you to uh, craft it, that's when you craft a new pattern. So if we take this and it is used in crafting up an iron crafter, let's have a look. I assume that's just going to give us an extra nine slots to work with. So an iron crafter, if we put that down. Ooh. Okay. So we went from nine to a full chest worth. Interesting. Upgrade holds more patterns and has an increased crafting speed. Let's see how high we can go with this, uh, with this one. If we do that, that gets us a gold crafter. Adds another two layers. Okay, okay. That is obviously used in a diamond crafter, which needs a neural processor from extra storage. Ooh, I don't know if I've ever crafted one of those. Well, I obviously have, or maybe I've received one as a as a reward and a crafting table. This is where having one of those attached to my compact machine, or not even that, attached to my unobtainium furnace, uh, is going to make crafting things like that super, super nice. So if I do this, we have a diamond here, and I assume it'll probably go up to netherite. Yeah. 
So if we put this down, diamond gets an additional two. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven times nine, 63. Okay, just under a stack. And then of course, this just requires a few more of these. And this kind of stuff, if I set patterns up for it, I should be able to go through and then just request like a neural processor. And it should even smelt the whole thing and put it back in, which would be kind of cool. So let's make two of those, two of those, and then use this for a netherite crafter. Okay, nice. So a netherite crafter has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine times nine, which is 81 slots. And I assume that I can probably put speed upgrades in here to make it go even faster. But for now, especially uh, when I'm just learning how to do this, I think 81 slots is going to get me, get me well and truly started. So let's clean this up a bit, I think. Now we're getting somewhere. So with a little bit of organization, I now have my main crafting grid here, which I don't necessarily use. I actually use my, uh, my wireless one, but it is handy to have it there just in case we want to look at what is in the system. We have my pattern grid, which I can use to create things with the pattern. Looks like I can uh, use that for putting stuff away too. So maybe we could get rid of this crafting grid if we so desired. We have the crafting monitor down here and the crafting manager up here, which shows off all of the uh, the patterns that we have available. Right now it is this single netherite crafter, which should get us started. So I want to practice a few things. And one of the first things that I would like to do is work out like a multi level craft, if that makes sense. So something that I, uh, I quite often use, you can see that I've actually done some diamond upgrades on these, but it's, uh, it's nice to get this copper upgrade just as a nice base for upgrading drawers and stuff wherever I need them. I actually need two more. So if that's the case, what I want to do is grab myself from copper. We want to make this and go create. So we have a copper ingot pattern from there. If I put this here and we grab our copper ingots and we turn that into a block, we can create a block of copper pattern and that organizes the patterns that we need here. From there, I'm going to make myself a spruce drawer uh, using a spruce chest. I like that. But if I'm going to do that, I probably want to make a pattern for this, which turns spruce logs into the spruce planks and if I find my spruce planks which I'm sure I have some somewhere right <laughs> we'll just uh, come in here and craft a couple we can grab one last pattern and turn that into a spruce chest with those four combined oh hello you have nothing I want <clears throat> with those combined all I need to do is make one last pattern I really need a refined storage uh, tab on this uh, a pattern here. We'll just grab all of them. And that pattern is for that. So if I put this in here like this, we have a copper upgrade pattern. And now if I go shift right click like that, hmm, do I need one in my inventory to, uh, to do it? I want a place where I can just request this. Let's see. Ah, a crafting grid. Okay, so maybe I can use this crafting grid and leave it assigned to my crafting stuff. Let's try this. If I want to craft this, let's say I want to craft two and start. When I go back over here and have a look down the bottom of my stuff, well, let's actually just go copper. Yeah, I have two. The only thing I wish is... Uh, well, I suppose that's what the crafting monitor is for. Let's try this again. For example, I want to craft, let's say half a stack of these. We are missing, oh, this is interesting. We're missing 99 spruce logs. That should be easy enough. Oh, that's definitely been cranking. Let's find a spot I don't mind ruining the, uh, the grass on, or I suppose we could just uh, come over to this spruce forest here and put those away. There we go. Now, if we come over to our crafting, we're going to have to do this again. 
says that we have it available. If I go start, yeah, look at that, crafting 26. Okay, so it's got to go through uh, an order. It has to craft some copper. It has to craft down some stuff, turn into drawers and all of this. So it does take a little bit of time, which is all right. But as we go to a point where we want it to go faster and faster, I think that adding some speed upgrades to our crafter is a good idea. So with that, there we go. And I should be able to go into here and go down to about the 30 mark. There we go. 32 copper upgrades. You know, I was quite scared of it, but all it took was a little bit of reading and uh, actually getting started to understand. And I think I get it. <laughs> I get it. Nice. Okay. So this is a temporary setup for a single netherite crafter. Um, current speed limit by pattern grid is two. Pattern grid. So this needs to be sped up, limited by pattern grid. Okay, let's see. At refined storage, I have a stack upgrade. So I wonder whether that does anything. We'll check and I'll grab these four speed upgrades. For starters, if I just put, wait, where did I put those? <laughs> I think away. If we put these, oh, I can't put it in there. Interesting. Hmm. Pattern grid. On the right side, the top slot is used for storing blank patterns with a blank pattern inside. Yeah, I know that. Increases the crafting speed. So this says it's limited by that. I wonder if we can put this in here. Still says it's limited at its current speed. Still some stuff to learn. Okay. A little bit of research and it seems like it's limited by what this is attached to. So you can see 108 slots. And if we bring that up to netherite, 125 slots is the current speed. So if I was to put these things, like that, 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 and that in there, um, perhaps it goes into this netherite barrel first. Let's actually test that and see whether it goes into the system. Previously, it was connected to this pattern grid and going directly back into the system. It may be that we need to set up these netherite barrels as an external storage or with an importer on them to import the items back into our RS. So let's, uh, at refined, we have some external storage, but for now, let's just grab this and let's request 10 more of these. Looking at this, yeah, okay, that was super fast. And it uh, didn't even need to go into there. I guess it's just that attached to it makes a difference. Because I guess if we go down here, yeah, I have 10 more. Interesting little, uh, little strange quirk to it. But I suppose we set up a little uh, sort of auto crafting area with netherite barrels on top to increase the speed of those significantly. Hmm. Who knows? I'm sure we will work that out. Uh, for now though, that's a little bit ugly. We might need to start working out where we want to hook these up. At the moment, I sort of have this side here as what I imagine will be uh, a spawning area. We might even build further out that way and have a bunch of individual ones like this because being able to turn on an individual one, hold on, and turn my magnet off, is quite handy for just getting a specific thing. But at the same time, uh, yeah, maybe we could uh, do a couple of different varieties of mob spawner in this back area. This side I'm feeling will probably open up into something else, but we might use one or two of these as a spot for a larger reactor. Something from the power mod being the uh, reactors here. So this can generate 250K FE per tick and with auto crafting, we should be able to automate the process of feeding it items and all of that fun stuff. Especially now that we have stuff like the ice, I believe we should be able to use this to craft up some ice, all the way to packed ice actually. So it's only one more ice essence to get ourselves some packed ice. And I think that would probably work just fine for cooling down our reactors. And it's probably fast enough as well. I think the reactors may also use some coal. So setting up an automatic crafting for coal whenever it's required. Yeah, I think we can work this out, but I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. For now, maybe we move our crafting section, or at least these netherite crafters, over into a little room just here. Yeah, let's do that. I think I'm going to set myself up with a couple of these. And to do so, hmm, how about we 
before we get into that and before I build an extra room, we use this crafting system to craft more of these netherite crafters, yeah? <laughs> that may mean working out how to get these things automated through my smelter or my furnace. Okay, let's put our furnace just here and let me double check what it said about these crafters. Um, one of these said about uh, processing. Block can also be placed facing a machine to use processing patterns. For example, if you point the crafter at a furnace, you can put a recipe inside for a recipe you need a furnace for, like smelting raw processes. As long as the crafter is attached to your system and the furnace has an importer attached to it, the crafter will allow you to request the smelted version. Okay, if that's the case, let's shrink down, make ourselves an importer, like so. Haha, <laughs> first one I've made. Put that on there, and I guess we need just a plain old crafter. And very soon we'll be able to automate this process. So, with a plain old crafter attached just here, like so, it is attached to an unobtainium furnace. Okay, interesting that it shows what it's attached to. When you click on it, spruce netherite barrel. Nice. Oh, I should uh, should grab this. Also, there are tiers to this, which uh, we can go up through. Creative has 54 slots, works instantly, etc. And uh, the creative stuff is actually sort of possible for us to make. So we may get there eventually. For now, though, let's try this out. So to start off with, making these crafters requires things like advanced processes and whatnot. Now, I have a bunch of those pre-made, but I probably want to set them up as options. So if we go into my crafting grid here, I'm going to go to a basic processor, which needs this. If we put that pattern in there, we get ourselves a pattern for a basic or a raw basic processor. Next thing I want is a raw improved processor, like so, and a raw advanced processor. So now do I put these ones in there? No, I probably put them inside my normal because this constructs normally and it doesn't need smelting. And then I want to put in the recipe for this. So this is a processing recipe. You can see that it actually automatically did that when I selected it, but it pops up in there as processing on the actual pattern itself. So if we look at these ones, this is user's exact mode, so that is for crafting. You can remove the exact mode, I believe, for things like sticks, and it will just use whatever is available, different types of wood and whatnot. The advanced processor, but when it pops up blue, I guess that means that it requires a different kind of processing. So I want that, and I want that, like so. If I put these in here, I can craft those. So let's see. If I have... 88. Let's request two of these. Um, machine does, doesn't does accept item. Oh, this needs to be connected to power. So obviously this is going to be something that we, uh, we have to set up a little bit nicer. But for now, let's just grab that. Let's put our factory upgrade in there so it accepts power and put that on there. Let's cancel that. And let's try this again. I want to start. Machine does not accept importer. Does the importer need to type mode whitelist, auto split, auto input and auto output on input from the back is an input, bottom is an output. Let's try that maybe. Machine does not accept item. So do I have to craft some of these first and then craft two of those? Hmm, I have multiple craftings going. Cancel. Okay, I need to work this out. Uh, small. <laughs> I need to work this out. But I think I'm on the right track. I just need to uh, get my orders in the right order. <laughs> Surely it's not this simple. Hold on. Did I just have it in the wrong order? And then crafter facing down. How do I make that face down? Can I do this with the wrench? 
Let's go small so we're low enough. Is that facing down? I don't think it is. Oh, huh. will, will this work? No machine found. What about, hmm. <laughs> How do I make that go straight down? What about that way? Nope. Maybe I need a refined storage wrench. This thing. If I put that there, like that, just to be safe, also place a, uh, a cable onto the back of it. What about now? If I go, I want two of those. It's processing. Oh, and I just need the, um, the back to be output. <laughs> wait, wait. Uh, we have 90. Now, obviously, I, I have two extras there, so we have 92, but that works. So if I requested uh, a bunch of these, let's say 32. This is the fast part. The slow part is this crafting something or other. Now, it may be that we need to speed up this. How about that? Oh, yep, yeah, that finished it nice and quickly. Okay, so a bit of a speed upgrade on our crafted there and then we have 86 let's get that to 100 let's wait let's see i need eight of those and 14 of those to get to 100 of each so if i go eight of those and 14 of those we've already got 100 of that and ta-da oh that's right i'm small ta-da <laughs> okay so it just requires being pushed down into there. Current speed is five times. And I think that is uh, completely related to whether or not it is a netherite or just a base level. So if we upgraded that, we could potentially get that up to speed of 125 or whatever the uh, maximum speed output of a netherite crafter is. I'm learning. <laughs> I'm learning. I'm starting to work it out. So with that sort of understood, I think what I'm going to do is run some cables underneath the ground here and make a little auto crafting room just back here that is going to uh, allow me to set up a bunch of these netherite crafters, have my unobtainium furnace connected to it as well. We can set up a bunch of things like glass uh, because we're going to have a bunch of space in the uh, netherite crafter. I can set up basic things that I want at all times like glass and silicon for refined storage things and then I can just come to this crafting grid whenever I need to and uh, or I can even um, swap over to the crafting display on my uh, my portable one. <laughs> Oh, da, 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 look at me. I feel smart. I know that uh, a lot of people who probably already achieved this understand this feeling, I hope, where like it may seem normal once you've done it a million times, but that first time of understanding auto crafting, it's pretty special. And hopefully anyone who's watching this and has never done it before, hopefully this helps you understand a little bit as well while I learn it with you. So let me uh, spend a little bit of time we might try and set up a auto crafting area over there. And then this system will be something else. And I would like to finalize by building up a good supply of these of each type. Now I'm already around there, but I think I want to get this guy up to about 4,000 as well, which is going to bite into these and just get a nice even amount of every type to get me going, especially now that I want to oh, wrench. Thank you. Uh, now that I want to start going into these later tiers, Getting myself automated diamonds, uraninite, and that uraninite is going to be very handy for making our power upgrades over here. The power reactors. Oh yeah, it's all coming together. <laughs> Let me build a room. <laughs> oh. Ooh. Ooh. Well, uh, perfect. <laughs> so with this, we now have an auto crafting room attached off to the side of here, just through a little nice hallway, something a bit different with some blackboards for uh, 
you know, some random stuff. Yeah. Ah. Hi, that one's so much neater. But uh, over here, I've just started to sort them a little bit into things like this. So this has a processor on it, which is showing me that this is for refined storage related things. Uh, over here, it's still a little bit unorganized, but mostly I'm going to try and organize these into things like uh, blocks, uh, resources like iron and coal and all of that, and uh, get it a little bit more organized. And I also have this one in here. We have some stone doorways going behind, and I think one of the last things I want to do before we finish up this episode is, uh, schmall time. Down here, we have this importer, and I feel like this may be the, uh, the bottleneck for speed. Right now, if we look at this, it says it's limited by the unobtainium furnace times six, and there's six slots. I believe, uh, on the bottom is the output. Top is the inputs. I believe I've got all of that set up correctly. So it really shouldn't be limited for speed, but maybe it's the, oh, I can walk over doors apparently. Maybe it is the, uh, the output of the importer that is slowing me down. So actually, dun, 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 we'll just quickly duck down in, oh, down in here, grab that and we can use this in upgrading to this elite importer and beyond so we just need another importer and i've also realized that the blue means that i have a recipe for it so i can request that so let's head back over i really should go big there we go head back over here and i needed one of these so i just request it and then I have what I need to make the importer. Super handy. So before when I was setting up things in this pattern and it was showing up blue, that means that I already have recipes for it. So if you are trying to make a recipe, for example, you can tell whether or not you have an existing recipe for some of the parts. Oh, I might just sleep through that so that we don't get thunder noises. So last thing to do is use these importers and make ourselves an elite importer. Hey yo. Which of course is one of the quest lines through here. Got an improved processor. And then we're going to want to make a couple more. This is something that I'm probably going to want to make a few of. So why don't we make use of our newfound abilities to make a recipe for these things. So I'm going to make a recipe for redstone. Then I'm going to make a recipe for the patterns. I don't have a recipe for glass yet, but I've got a little bit in the system already, so I'm just going to rely on that. We'll make a recipe for glass later, and then I'll make a recipe for the importer itself. Now I have a recipe for all of those other things, and I just made the one for the importer, so I'm going to get a recipe for that elite, and I only need two of those, and then I already have the recipes for all of those, so I'm going to make one of those for an ultra importer, and then a creative. I need recipes for this. So a recipe for silicon. Do I have silicon essence? I don't think I do yet. Hmm. For now, I'm just going to make the ultra importer recipe like that. Now, if I chuck eh, the redstone, I'll put in another one. But if I chuck these patterns in here, and I'm just going to put that one in there. Can I request an ultra importer? And I need two of them. It looks like I have everything available. Let's start. And <laughs> wait, where is it? Refined storage. Oh, it will be uh, part of a different thing. Yeah, there we go. Two ultras. And then that is used in making ourselves one of these. Nice. So we're going to have to uh, set up a couple of extra bits and pieces, of course. Let's just put that in there. Now, why did that not output? Ah, oh, because I have taken the importers off it. <laughs> So this is used in that din -din -din -din. Ha -ha. I accidentally skipped the ultra one. I can probably request one of those, right? There we go. It's made. I'll just put that in my inventory as well. Look at us. Yeah. So if we take that importer, shrink down oh, and then place the creative importer underneath that. I don't have to worry about speed upgrades because it's instant. That still says limited, but I think it is going to help. So even though this episode is sort of running a little long, I mean, last episode was even longer, 
but I want to do this last thing to test the speed of what we have. So sand, I want to grab the recipe for that and make a pattern. Then what I want to do is use that sand to make glass. Yep, sand into glass, a processing. Okay, the sand into glass is a processing pattern which can go in there. And this one can just go in there for sand. Let's test it out. So we've built up a decent supply of the things that we need to make the sand. Let's request 1,024. It doesn't require that much of these two, so let's do that. Surely not. Is that done? Wait a second. Okay, we have a 1149 sand. Uh... <laughs> It's instant. Let's try crafting up 4,096. Can I catch it? it? It's it's done. There we go. We have 6,000 sand. Now the question is, can we craft up? Mm, let's just do 4,000 glass again and see whether it makes use of the unobtainium furnace. Uh, it's a little glitchy looking. Hmm. Let's have a look, see. That doesn't quite seem right. Okay. Maybe I need a stack upgrade in this. All right. <laughs> it's, uh, it's not perfect. I'm just going to cancel all. We do have a bit of sand, but we still have enough for a 4,000 run. Let's just try a uh, stack upgrade. I need one, two, three, four. Still doing a little bit of manual crafting. I can't put a stack upgrade in there. Hmm. Interesting. Let's try this again. By putting a buffer on here, I believe that this should still be able to auto input from the top. Let's try this one last time. So I'm going to request, oh, wait, I need to put the uh, the things back in. Hold on. Do, 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 do. And I'm gonna just add these speed upgrades just in case it makes a difference. Limited, ah. So the speed upgrades do make a difference because when I remove them all, the speed is 125. But when I put one in, it now says it's limited at 132. So we only really need one. Good to know. Okay, the final test. Glass. I want 4,096. Start. Uh, that seems to be going. Not perfectly. Okay. There's probably still a little bit to work out. But, uh, I mean... I think I did it. Yeah, look at that. We have 6,900 glass. Nice. So with that, I think we're going to call it here. Hopefully this helped some people. And I hope you enjoyed uh, watching me stumble my way through all of this. Also, just so you know, that is actually an importer with a little uh, cover on it from refined storage that I can put backpacks up against it to uh, store stuff in there. I didn't get around to setting that up, but we might do that first thing in the next episode because I have run out of episode time. I think this has gone well long enough and we've got ourselves a nice little auto crafting setup. So with that, I hope you all enjoyed. I would like to thank my Patreon supporters for your continued support. You folks are amazing and you allow me to do this full time. It really does mean a lot. And to everyone who's watching, we're nearly at episode 30. <laughs> this world is coming along nicely and I'm starting to get some ideas for what I want to build around here. We're definitely going to expand things. So, with all that being said, I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, do me a favor and leave a like and a comment. It does help a lot with the YouTube algorithm. But regardless of that, as long as you enjoyed, I'm a happy man. So until the next episode, I hope you all take care of yourselves and I'll see you then. Bye-bye, everyone. Uh, whoop!